Day five on the Viking bed project. You can't start working without a good cup of coffee. That's my opinion anyway. The chickens have started laying their eggs for the day. That's the reason for the racket outside. One of the charms with living on the countryside. <laughs> the first task for today is to hand plane the surfaces on the planks and the posts. One reason is that I have a lot of markings on them that I want to get rid of. But the main reason is to get a better surface. I usually do that even if I work with dry lumber, but this time we worked with not particularly dry lumber, because we milled it the day before we ran it through the big jointer planer at the other workshop. That's uh, unorthodox to say the least, but uh, the project was planned like that. We were supposed to finish the bed in three days, so Johan and Bia could bring it back home. But because it took a lot longer than we expected, we decided yesterday that uh, they would go home and I would finish it and bring it to them later, so they get a nice bed instead of a quickly finished bed. So, uh, I'll start planing and uh, we'll take it from there. Quack in my pocket is my alarm clock. I'm baking some bread today as well, so I have to run back and forth between the workshop and uh, the barbecue because I'm trying out baking bread on the barbecue. New experiment, let's see how that works.
just coming up to temperature now. I want it to start around 250 degrees Celsius. No idea what that would be in Fahrenheit. You'll have to look it up for yourselves. I thought since it worked so well making pizza in it the other night, why not make bread in it as well? Then I can make bread without using electricity, which is nice. Now it's just a matter of leaving it for an hour, crossing my fingers and see if it turns out edible or not. Back to work. Four boards and four posts to plane. a bit rough so I decided to resharpen the blade a bit there are a couple of different methods of sharpening blades as I guess you know a lot of people seem to prefer water stones or diamond stones I for myself use a soft and hard Arkansas stone and sharpening oil and this setup with slots to take the stones and a little fence on the bottom to hold it in the vise that's uh, something I I saw Paul Sellers do. He uh, doesn't use the same stones, but uh, this method of holding the stones is something I borrowed from him. I learned quite quite a lot of useful stuff watching his channel. It's one of the. Truly masterful woodworkers out there. So if you don't already know about him, you should definitely go to his channel and learn a thing or two. I'm no expert in sharpening, and I should confess that, but... It will definitely be a lot better than when I started. Sliding your thumbnail along the edge of the blade is a very good way to feel all the small nicks that you need to grind down that trick I learned from a Swedish master woodcutter who is nowhere near YouTube so <laughs> well his name is Torleif Aif
now they are gone. Then I can move over to the hard stone. Not so much for grinding as for polishing really. Classic test, I guess. I also have a strop. It's a little bit worn down, but still works. It could be a lot wider. One of these days I'll make a new one. Much nicer. nicer cuts. Great.
time to check on the bread. It's dropped down to 175 or thereabouts and that's actually just what I want. Let's see how it looks. Looks like bread. I'll leave it for a little bit longer. When I make bread in our electric oven, I usually bake it with a starting temperature of 250 degrees Celsius and then drop that to uh, 175 or 200 depending on what type of bread and how big the loaves are and then I leave it after I shut the oven off for like half an hour or so so I'm trying to replicate something accordingly on the grill and I think the time it takes to plane the last board should be sufficient camera Well, that went a little bit quicker than I imagined. Too early to take the bread out of the grill now. I'll just do a new test fitting of the bed and remark the height for for the support for the mattress inside because uh, I planed those markings off without thinking about it. <laughs> so I need to do that anyway.
right, let's see. It's a bit burnt in the bottom. Wrong knife for the job, but that's what I have right now. Pretty good and pretty hot. The crust is a little bit dry. Mm. Excellent. Works. I'll do it again. And this reminds me it's time for lunch. From bread baking and lunch, time to get back to the planing. First, old coffee is also coffee. <laughs> I will put a microwave oven here in the workshop later, I think, so I can heat it. I almost never drink hot coffee when I'm working. Cold coffee it is. I refer to it as workshop coffee. I'm gonna take the bed apart and plane the posts. That's the next job. So uh, I'll go ahead and do that. Well, that's it really. Just a little bit nicer surface. With a wide smoother like this, it's a four and a half, standard four and a half. We take pretty wide cuts, and this, ah, maybe one or two more. Just to get the machine plane surface off, you don't really need to do much. It's easy to do too much because it's so nice to plane with a freshly sharpened blade. Right. And then I'm going to mark this as well.
that's all the posts and planks planed with the smoother went real quickly but that's about as much as I will do today because uh, I spent some time baking and it's so humid and hot that I can't really keep it up anymore today so I'll get back to it tomorrow then it's time to decorate the top parts of the posts, I think. Or maybe something else, we'll see. But probably that, because that's what I'm looking forward to the most. So I'll get back to it tomorrow. With a fresh cup of coffee. day again fresh cup of coffee and I'm ready to go to work the heat has passed again so it's much easier to uh, do stuff now I think and I finished all the planing last time so now I have a lot of shavings on the floor that I need to clean up before I start anything else On the note of keeping the workshop tidy, maybe you notice there are a few projects on the floor here, but I don't really have any where to put them because I haven't finished the workshop entirely. In the future, I will. Uh, Put some consoles on the walls so I can store lumber and ongoing projects there and not directly on the floor. Ideally, of course, I would also finish one project before I start another one. But it doesn't always turn out like that. But I can work around this small pile of lumber but I can't work around all the shavings on the floor. I marked the distance from the bottom end on all four posts up to the point where the decorations will start. And uh, now I'm going to mark out the first lines to start the basic cuts. And as a genuine TV chef, here's one I prepared earlier. This is what we are after. This is not a finished decoration, this is just the first cuts that will be. Uh, further shaped after this, but this is what I'm going to demonstrate in this one now. So there will be three lines marked on the post. Those lines will be transferred to all four sides of the post with the combination square. If I managed to square the post properly I will hit the exact mark now when I come around the post. And it looks like I did. Doesn't always end up like that, I have to say. There we go. 
so these two will be tapered this one like so and this one from the top and down and this will be a sort of waist decoration next step to mark how far into the material the tapering will go I chose to put it 20 millimeters from the face and in gives me a clearly pronounced tapering but leaves enough material in between here so these uh, decorations won't break off too easily sides. If I would mark it on this side it would disappear because this will be cut off. The entire face here will disappear but the waist will be left. So I will put the marks on that one. If I wasn't filming this I would do these markings on all four posts at the same time obviously but that's a slightly different approach when you are doing it in front of the camera these lines represent the saw cuts so this goes away and the same on this side like so and that's the general idea I will uh, do these lines on the opposite side as well not here because these flats will disappear when I make a cut but here I also want to create knife walls better chance to, to make a straight cut with the saw I cut along the line and then I cut away the material on the side that's going to cut be cut away uh, maybe that's obvious to most people watching this but I'll just mention it anyway I'll also make knife walls for these straight cuts From this first line there will not be a straight cut since the taper will run from it down to that line but I want some sort of a edge to guide the saw blade here as well so what I will do is uh, put the ruler along the line and then I will uh, tilt the knife blade try to find the approximate angle I will make the cutaway there may be better ways to do this this is the way I am trying. There we go. I'll use a chisel to make it a little bit deeper.
not sure if I need to cut away like this. There's an obvious risk that I cut down into the material that, that's supposed to be left, but I will dress the surfaces later on anyway. So there we have something to guide the saw blade, hopefully in that pretty shallow angle that the cut will be made. Let's see if that works. The first cuts I'll make are the 90 degree cuts into the timber on all, all four sides on each side of uh, this middle piece. To do that I could use a tenon saw or a hand saw like these ones perhaps but they're not so fun not particularly good but I don't have any better saws yet this is a bit aggressive this is not aggressive enough and also since I have one I thought it'd be much more fun to use a more traditional saw it's a bow saw some people think these are called frame saws that's not right a frame saw is something else that's used to split timber into thinner dimensions for resawing and you have it like this with a wooden piece on each side and the blade in the middle oriented orientated like that and you saw down into the number like that but this is called a bow saw also a turning saw if it is built like this with handles that can turn so you can position the blade however you want depending on what you want to do with it if you put a thinner blade in you can use it for uh, all kinds of curved shapes I have another one slightly smaller that I use for that sometimes and I will build yet the third one in a size that I feel that I need that might be something for a future video anyway I'll use this it has some more aggressive cuts than uh, the back so I just showed you and that's good when you're making uh, big cuts in soft wood that will be dressed further later on anyway so you tighten it like that and then you get to work
Well, that's the first cut on all four sides. Now it's time for these wedges to be cut out. When I cut all four of them out, I just turn it and do the same thing. I have to mark it again because then these surfaces are gone. So I'll start with these four. And this is where it gets a little bit tricky because I need to cut in at a very flat angle as you can see. That's why I needed to make a cut here with the knife so I have some sort of starting edge for the saw here as well. Hope it will work. Well, if it turns out ugly, no matter, I will smooth it later with chisels and whatnot. out on this side. This is typically one of those things that's always turning out better when you're not shooting. But I will uh, just use the chisel and dress it later like that. One thing I could do is to make a slightly deeper French to start in. I don't think knife or wall is the proper name for it as I use it here because I don't really make a wall, I just make a cut really. considerable difference I'd say. I take off this corner first and then I would take off this corner on the other side to follow the line on that side. And that hopefully will make the cut straighter. It looks all right, I think. nicer cut. And now for the 
top part. Now I need to create some sort of edge on the top. I'll just try something similar. Mark it a little bit with a knife first and then just chop it down slightly with a chisel. Lines cut straight and be happy. Starting with the, the whole length of the cut a little bit first, trying to keep the right angle and then dropping the saw down to take the corner. the nose part of the saw to take the, the corner on the far side. Seems to be following the line pretty well. I should point out that all the cuts I'm making now with the bow saw could be done on a bandsaw. But since this is an interpretation of a historical bed from uh, the Gokstad burial ship from around the 900s, I thought it would be nice to use a little bit more of my hand tools for it. Now it's time to mark out. These cuts using a combination square set to 20 millimeters again to make quick and easy work of that. Sure, marking with a pencil along the edge like this won't give you total accuracy. Then again. It's enough for these rough cuts. Hmm. Sounds like it's time to do something else for a while. Earlier in this project, I was baking some bread on the barbecue and now Today we are making sun-dried tomatoes in our own electric sun up in the kitchen. So I will have to take off and just check on them and get back to this really soon. The tomatoes were fine and I took the opportunity to heat up my coffee a bit. Back to 
to the next cuts which is as I said the same cuts as I did here and here but on this plane now let's go I marked 20 millimeters in from the edge everywhere so now it's just a matter of striking a line from that out to the tip the tip on the top stupid even more stupid it helps if you hold your ruler really firmly when you want to make a straight line Same procedure again, starting in the up and down position. I just find it easier to do this bit before I take the top part. just stop at this point it's very easy in this position to sight down the line I'm gonna cut so I have the chisel in line with that
and that's it. That's all the rough cuts. Now I'll just do the same on the other two longer posts. These two first ones or the shorter ones, the one I prepared and the one I filmed now. I'll do the other two as well. There is something else I have to determine before I do the de decoration cuts on the tall posts and that is how tall to actually make them. I cut them with what I think was a fair bit of margin. So now I just have to estimate how much taller I want them compared to the posts on the foot end of the bed. Not all the way up I think but maybe somewhere here. There is also uh, the matter of uh, my friends being able to load it in the car and fit it into the tent they will use. So uh, that's also a reason to not make the posts too high. It has more to do with the, the space in the tent than in the car actually. Anyway, I'll just have to make a decision of some sort. And they are 120 centimeters tall, which is 47 inches for all you imperial friends. The shorter ones are 90 centimeters, which is uh, 35 and a half inches more or less. So I think I'll cut it to uh, 110, 1 meter 10, 43 inches, uh, almost 43 and a half. That would be that would be good. Do it with a hand saw as well. It's a uh, hand sawing day today. Won't use the chop saw. Or miter saw. Which is the word I prefer for it. I guess that's about all I will do today. I'll call it a night when I made the cuts on the two tall posts. I won't bother shooting it since you already saw it on the shorter one. So uh, I'll get back to the further dressing and decoration tomorrow.